You know, I think we can all agree here, politicians are single-handedly the most honest people on the planet. Right next to lawyers and bankers. So honest that you can trust them to do things in the interests of the people they represent, as opposed to themselves. Because they are, just like lawyers and bankers, highly credible. They wouldn't, they wouldn't abuse expenses to uh, get rather ostentatious things like a house for a duck pond, or allow their husband to rent pornography, because that was what people did back in 2007. Pornhub apparently didn't have the impact, and our internet service wasn't great either for streaming. Ho hum. No, 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 they wouldn't do that. Lawyers wouldn't fleece their clients for uh, those lovely little loopholes that save their celebrity friends. No, no. However, we're not really going to be focusing on the lawyer's integrity, because that's obviously sky high much like the bankers, we are instead going to focus on politicians. Notably, two of them today, because two people have done things that are interesting. It makes you question the credibility of politicians. makes you wonder that maybe, just maybe, they're not as credible as we would like to believe they are. Or maybe these two are just bad eggs. I mean, politicians as a whole, they do what's in the interest of the people by obeying what they say, right? Right? Let us start by talking about Fiona Onasanya, the MP, or former MP at the moment, for the quaint little Haiti area more commonly known as Peterborough. She was unfortunately forced to serve a little time, because rather unfortunately she felt compelled to mislead some officers with regards to a speeding offence, and ended up spending some time at Her Majesty's pleasure palace. After the conviction... The Labour Party had, of course, because of Miss Onasanya's background, had to be careful here. Because they had to deal with her carefully, because they don't want to be accused of being racist, but at the same time, they have to deal with her absolutely. So they expelled her. Of course, she was still able to cast a decisive vote in Brexit votings in Parliament when it came to voting on things that Parliament would agree to with regards to amendments and other such nonsense. And recently, the 10% threshold required to remove Miss Onasanya from her post as an MP for Peterborough was met after 19,261 people signed a petition to get rid of her. Now, she can still, as an independent, stand in the by-election, which I believe is tomorrow. Now, unfortunately for her, the Peterborough City Council, yeah, they indicated that the total number, which was the 19,000 I mentioned, made up 27.6% of the eligible residents. I don't think you're going to win the by-election. I think whoever Labour put forward will win, because Peterborough, I believe, is a safe seat. But unfortunately for Miss Anasanya, she has raised, or taken the bar that was raised really high for that credibility MPs have, and just tanked it. How unfortunate. Let's hope this one incident doesn't mar her reputation, or the reputation of the delightful MPs in Parliament. Moving on from her, we should now talk about another one, another former MP called Natalie McGarry. As she won her seat in 2015, she won it and dedicated her victory to every mother that ever queued at a food bank, with no small amount of irony because she lost her seat in 2017 after she embezzled a bunch of money, some of which was earmarked for a food bank in Perth. Oh dear, oh dear. Now, the embezzlement goes quite far, to the tune of 21,000 that was actually earmarked for Women's for Independence, a group, 4.6,000 for an SMP group, and the remaining amount were substantial donations, not specific, that were meant for Perth and Kinross Food Bank. Quite unfortunate, really, when you think about it, because she got busted by the Women for Independence group that alerted police because they noticed discrepancies in the accounts which was back in November of 2015. The total amount that they have managed to notice missing is nearly £33,000. Now, Miss McGarry resigned as the SNP whip and was suspended from the party, but because she's an MP and gets to sit a full term, she continued as an independent MP. The SNP, just like Labour, took the right action to remove the toxic limb from their party. We can't have their credibility after all brought into question, because they both have such high credibility after all, don't they? It's not like they do things in their own interests, 
and ignore the will of their people. Cough, cough, Brexit, cough, cough, independence. Never. Now, on March 2018, Natalie McGarry appeared in the Glasgow Sheriff Court, and she originally entered a plea of not guilty to the three charges of embezzlement and an additional charge under the Regulation of Investigatory Powers Act of 2000, which was in relation to failing to provide police with a passcode to a mobile phone that was seized from her. There are arguments about data and with regards to phones that are for work and home phones. If it was a personal phone, there are arguments that can be made that that she wouldn't have to submit information, of course, with ongoing investigations. This gets quite murky. There have been a number of problems that arise from those who own iPhones, not giving over the details or allowing their phone to be accessed, and Apple themselves protecting that customer's right to protect the information. If the phone was used with regards to work, then a certain argument can be made that it is, in fact, highly important. Needless to say, she entered not guilty. When the trial began, though... She then changed the plea on the 24th of April of this year to guilty to two charges of embezzlement, with the remaining charges having been dropped. But this is where it gets rather amusing. See, this poor defenceless MP has made a mistake. She, she tried to withdraw her guilty pleas, but left it too late to do it, meaning that she cannot remove the guilt that she has now assigned herself. There is a certain thing more commonly known as parliamentary privilege where some politicians have used it to get out of trouble, in the sense that you rarely hear of MPs being arrested. But when you do, oh boy, oh boy, the book is thrown at them. Some, I think two that I know of so far, have been arrested. Anna Sanya being one, if I can find the other one, I will link it below, and maybe put an image on the screen now of it. With Natalie McGarry, I'm not entirely sure what her future holds. She has admitted guilt and tried to remove it, for reasons I don't understand. Perhaps a plea could have been agreed upon had she agreed perhaps to pay back the 33000 she stole. Now with her campaign, and this bugs me the most about her, being that she wanted to stand up for mothers who queued up at food banks and then took money away that was earmarked for a food bank, she showed that she truly did not represent the people and had no interest in serving those people or giving back to the people and giving people a fair chance. Food banks at this moment in time are important. Last night on my Prime Minister's Questions stream, I did discuss this. Over 1.6 million food parcels were handed out last year, an increase of 73% over the last five years. It is so important right now that food banks exist, and depriving them of about six to eight grand is important. Depriving them of any money that can be given to them freely is ridiculous. It shows you, Natalie McGarry especially, lack any integrity whatsoever. Do you represent all MPs? No, but most of us think that MPs are self-serving pigs in the first place. We think this because we've seen how you deal with enacting what we want. The one thing that, for example, Brexit has taught us is that the MPs are not interested in giving the people what they want. Natalie McGarry is a shining light of an MP, former MP now no less, who took advantage of the very position she holds and has used it to serve herself. This will do nothing to help people like her husband, for example, who is a Conservative council on the Glasgow City Council. I can't imagine that does anything good for his career because let's not forget here, guilt by association is still considered a legitimate behaviour. As many of you will undoubtedly have noticed here, I'm being fairly sarcastic throughout the entire damn video. There is still going to be one or two people, though, that notice what I say and take it seriously. Please don't. I hold a very serious position on all of this. For Fiona Onasanya, you lied to the police. Because you thought your parliamentary privilege would extend this far. You deserve to go to prison, and you are now more than likely going to lose your seat. And you deserve that. For you let the people of your constituency, the very people that voted you in, down. With Natalie McGarry, you stole £33,000. You stole money for Women for Independence. You stole money for a freaking food bank. You deserve to go to prison as well. You deserve to lose your seat. You do not deserve anything but misery. Anyway, tonight, over on the Omega Plays channel and on Twitch, I'm going to be streaming some Euro Truck Simulator. We're going to be leaving St. Pete. I don't know where we're going to end up, but we're going to leave, go wherever. Who knows, maybe I'll buy a new truck. I haven't decided yet if I'll do it this month or next month. But I do enjoy the Actros, so it's not so bad. 
So if I don't see you over there tonight, I do hope you all have a lovely Thursday, and thank you all for listening. <laughs>